ladies and gentlemen of the College Historical Society, all of the harms that they have addressed to you this evening, that they have contributed to religion, are things that we as human beings did ourselves. They are things that we as human beings committed, and they are not things that are inherent to religion. We as human beings undermined women and gay people. We as human beings started wars, and we as human beings institutionalized these ideas and forced them on other people. There is absolutely nothing inherent to the idea of having a developed philosophy of existence that means that we do these things. These are things that we need to take responsibility for because we commit them. Ladies and gentlemen, I felt this debate came down to two main issues. This idea of social policy and whether or not religious institutions take responsibility for the social policies they talk about and for the things done in the name of religion. And then I'm going to talk about religion itself and what that's brought us and why that's a good thing. Okay, this idea of social policy. So first of all, there were all these ideas brought forth that anyone who believes in religion is inherently coerced and is inherently irrational and is no longer engaging with rationality. We say that these things are fundamentally wrong and anyone who says them doesn't actually understand what religion is about. Religious people still choose to belong to their religion. Religious people still engage rationally with their faith. It is not something that is inherent that people just do things mindlessly. I want to tell you a few of the things that they've talked about today. They, talked that, they said that every step of humanity has been blocked by religion. They said that religion is no rationality and no reason. They said that religious people hold no value for human life. They said that religious encourages people to kill others. And they said that if anyone believes in the afterlife, they're more likely to do harm. We say that these things are incredibly harmful and incredibly disgusting that anyone would say this about another human being. And if they were said about women, if they were said about gay people, they would be called hate speech and they would be treated as such, as they well should be. However, for some reason, it's, it's somehow okay for people to talk about them about religion. What they've shown for you today is they've shown you that religious institutions do not hold a monopoly on scapegoating other individuals for problems within society. They do not hold a monopoly on undermining other people's beliefs and just calling them irrational and saying that they're complete idiots. Ladies and gentlemen, all of the rhetoric that they've been giving you about why religion is so damaging is identical to the rhetoric that was given by religious institutions about why atheism was so damaging. These things are just something that is inherent to humanity. They are things that human beings do to each other. And when you go and take, take say, oh, this is all religion's fault. Not only are you not dealing with the actual problem, but you are undermining some institutions Shut that have given us some of the greatest things that we, that we have and some of the most valuable things. Okay, so like, um, go on. Is it absolutely impossible that any sort of other institution could have done these things as well? As we've seen with civil society... Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. But, you know, of course, yeah, any institution could have done this. And other institutions do do these things in exactly the same way as states do all of the harms that you've identified. The private institutions that have lots of power do all of these things as well. It's not something that's inherent to religion. It's just something that we as human beings do. The idea of war was brought up. Oh, religious people start wars. Okay, that's rubbish. People start wars because they want money. Because they want to go and steal <laughs> Things, right? I think it's a hell of a lot more likely that all of those Western white people in Europe went over to the Middle East and said, you know what, they've got lots of really nice shiny golden things that I want to steal. I think that's a hell of a lot more likely as to what recently started than all of the rubbish that they were part by the proposition. This idea of persecution, ladies and gentlemen, we persecute people. All loads of non-religious institutions persecute people as well. The idea of communism was brought up. You know, obviously people do that anyway. There's nothing inherent to the idea of religion that, that, that's told us otherwise. But then we were told, oh no, religion is, is, is particularly potent. You know, oh no, it, it, it's different because, because, because it's different. Well, you know what, it's not different, right? Any other institution that has been given the same power as religion has exploited it in exactly the same way. If you look at, if you look at the idea of like just, just, just any other institution, just inherently does all of these things, and all of these things get done regardless. Ladies and gentlemen, making judgments about religion based on fanatic religious people is exactly the same as ma about making judgments on politics based on bad politicians. But yet no one's getting up here and saying that we regret that there's a state, because even though the state has caused all of the problems that they've identified, because they know that they're wrong with that, and they know that, that, that the state has done so many good things, and they also know that there's nothing inherent to the idea of having a state that results in these things, because we, they all know that we have done these things. Okay, but you know, let's say I'm wrong. Let's say I'm wrong. Let's say people are just crazy, irrational people. And let's say religious institutions pluck ideas out of the sky and then everyone just goes along with them without engaging in them rationally. We say we still win. Why? Because they fail to deal with what is the fundamental social policy of every single religion. It is love thy neighbor. In other words, be a nice guy. If we are taking responsibility for all of the harms they've identified, we also take responsibility for the fact that anyone is ever nice to anyone else. We take responsibility for the fact that we live in a society 
society in which people don't just go out and murder people because religious institutions were the only ones who were telling people to stop murdering people. Because religious institutions were the only ones who instilled this idea of morality. No thank you. So like, yeah, we win, in other words, right? Whether or not people are, are, are crazy lunatics who just follow religion, or whether or not they actually rationally engage, we win either way. But now, what has religion actually brought us? What has the ideas of religion actually done for us? I'm going to talk to you about these things because these are things that are in fact inherent to the, the idea of religion. I think it's very important, important to identify that the idea of philosophy the study of philosophy as a subject was fundamentally intertwined with religion for centuries. And we say that like, if you look at the great philosophers, most of, like, a hell of a lot of them were religious. And a hell of a lot of them took, took their patronage from religious institutions. And of course I'm not saying that you know, philosophy is so, you know, you know, that the religious institutions invented philosophy. But what I'm saying is that so many philosophers and such a vast amount of the wealth of knowledge we built up through philosophy is owed to religious institutions. And I say that if you look at people like Nietzsche, who eventually rejected religion, the mechanisms and the ideas with which they rejected religion are fundamentally owed to religious institutions themselves because they were the ones who, 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 who contributed so much to the body of philosophical knowledge to begin with. And they were the ones who were really the only ones who cared about philosophy for so many hundreds of years because they were the only ones who were thinking about the ideas of the unknown and the metaphysical. Um, and then, you know, um, and I think, I think that ultimately, right, it's, it, it's a really good thing. And it's a really good thing that now we're in the position where a lot of people can now reject religion on a rational basis, as opposed to just religion never existed, in which we're all just forced to reject it based on the fact that it was never there. So, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, when you cast your vote and when you decide whether or not you want to, whether or not you, in fact, regret religion, I want you to think about all of the things that religion has brought us. And I want you to ask yourself whether or not any of the harms identified would have happened without religion. We say that absolutely is the case. And we say that when you regret religion, you are necessarily regretting something that has caused us so much good. And, 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 and for that reason, and for the reasons I've outlined, I beg to oppose.